All right, everyone, for a long time, the DOJ was very tight-lipped about whether there were other records that would be related to exactly what we saw with the FISA memo. So it's time for a, a wrap-up number four of the FISA material we now have. Now, because, of course, the other day we had Trey Gowdy's double comments, we've had Comey weighing in, Maddow making a fool of herself, uh, and others. And it's boiled down, you know, pretty much along partisan lines for the most part. But when you get a federal judge asking the DOJ explicitly, uh, and this is, you know, link in the description, asking, well, wouldn't the disclosure of this necessitate that the DOJ be forthcoming about the fact that there are other such, you know, memos and, and uh, materials, you know, related to surveillance that would need to be acknowledged? See, the thing is, they've been FOIA'd before. Uh, and various groups have speculated for some time that such materials existed, so this could be a, a can of worms just being opened. Uh, that would go well beyond this specific case. I mean, it, it might not pertain at all to Trump or anyone related to Trump, but you've got to understand, the FISA system has been around for a while, sort of popularized in the Bush era, promulgated, expanded, and made ten times worse, and, and presumably... Uh, if, if Lois Lerner and this memo are any indicator, probably politicized under the Obama administration. The FISA system has only rejected in the entirety of its existence, out of tens of thousands of requests for warrants, 12 warrants. Only 12 times was there no rubber stamping. Over 99.9%, .9%, I believe, uh, success rate, therefore, uh, at the government getting the warrants that it wants. If handing the FISA court material that was political in nature and apparently admitted to before the FISA court now we're finding out uh, to be so at the time if that can be then used to grant such a warrant I'm assuming that the general threshold is pretty fucking low um, and so <laughs> I think it's gonna be a public relations nightmare at the very least even if this doesn't lead to anything further look a federal judge is now doing fundamentally what Ted Cruz did in congressional hearings some time ago which is sort of cross-examining these people and saying you know we we want to know what the hell's going on but you're saying you're gonna do internal investigation there's no problem everything's classified so you can't disclose anything what are you talking about and then sometimes it turns out it was just uh, procedural it wasn't even classified at all exactly uh, what was going on. I would think that the DOJ simply admitting that such materials exist is not a breach of any real protocol. Uh, I would assume that the people have a right to know because, again, if this memo that stands out above all else was supposedly a dud and doesn't matter, you know, it, it endangers our intel community, it endangers data gathering, it endangers national security, but it's also a dud and we already knew all of this stuff. Somehow these two things in the minds of the average Democratic partisan are capable of coexisting. Uh, if that's the fact, if that's the worst that it can be, then, you know, everything should be declassified. Nobody should care. All of the FISA applications should be made public. You know, you can redact a few sensitive things, but you might as well just have transparency. If, that, if, if in the course of decades it's the worst one, you know, the worst possible abuse, eh, no problem. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to bat an eye. It'll exonerate the FISA process. And the government's always saying how wonderful and how, how uh, uh, necessary it is for national security. It's so great. And by the way, uh, I saw this was an interesting aside within the realm of hypocrisy. Be, uh, being liberal the other day. You know, the same group that's like, oh, the FBI, our boys, uh, if you criticize them, you are a, a traitor in, in some magical realm of, of non-reality. They think this. They then, in the same exact day, they have an article about ICE, another bureaucratic front. Oh, they're so corrupt, they shouldn't exist. It's so evil. It's rife with abuse. You know, they're probably stealing money, and they're doing terrible things to immigrants, and they're abusive. You know, police state USA. So you're saying you don't have a problem with the fact that the government can, outside of the public court process, surveil anybody that it wants because they happen to talk to somebody in, in Yemen at one point in their life. You don't have a problem with that. That's not police state. It's not abuse. It's not unconstitutional. It's not a problem. It's not a waste of money. Uh, you know, despite all evidence to the contrary with, regarding this data gathering, these various practices. That's just fine with you. And anyone that challenges the FBI's automatic integrity is an evildoer themselves. If you believe that these bureaucrats could possibly, in some cases, be corrupt, then you hate the whole FBI, too, is what they would say. But it's okay to say that everybody working for ICE is a shit fuck. 
Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now, I think you're just holding the FBI up on a pedestal because of this mystique surrounding it. Sort of like, it's sort of like the CIA on the FBI, you know, generally maybe a better reputation. The thing is, though, none of the people criticizing the FBI are saying, hey, at the highest levels, we've got a totally rotten system that's, you know, it's totally non-working. They're saying a handful of FBI agents were involved in politicized behavior that compromised the integrity of our democracy, which is true. The memo proves this. It shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that that's exactly what happened. The attempt to spy on Carter Page really was an attempt to spy upon using this you know, surveillance system, Donald Trump. Trying to tell me that it's not is laughable and trying to conflate, as I said before, uh, this dossier, the, the Pissgate stuff, being used, being fed to the FBI and then before a FISA court in order to obtain a warrant on people who were part of a presidential campaign. If you think that that's the same, as routine opposition research that was just, you know, bullshit to begin with. It was literally nothing more than smear pieces that didn't even have any uh, grounding in reality. If you are considering those to be the same thing, then I do not trust your judgment on this or any other issue. Unfortunately, that's what I seem to be hearing. That and the big attack line now has, de has defaulted back. I guess they were using A-B testing. Uh, they decided it was more effective to say Trump hates the FBI. Trump's fans hate the FBI. You know what? Who gives a fuck? It wouldn't matter. That doesn't mean that that doesn't have anything to do with whether the memo is true or not. That doesn't have anything to do with whether the FISA process is being abused or not. That has nothing to do with whether these individual FBI agents, you know, broke, uh, broke our election laws or not. You're just deflecting. You're trying to make a straw man argument, but it wouldn't even matter. It wouldn't matter if someone did hate the FBI. Look, you hate ICE. Does that mean we, can, we can't look into any abuse by ICE because, you know, you're, you, something wrong with you. You don't trust this bureau. Look, bureaus are nonsense anyway. Bureaus are where most of the corruption is. Look, all of the regulatory burden and fees and abuses and police state bullshit, it's not directly authorized by Congress. Congress doesn't sit down and write a law tomorrow saying, here's, here's the screw you act, we're going to screw everybody over, and here's how we're gonna do it. No, they need bureaus to do that. So they simply empower a bureau within unreasonable bounds, and then the bureau goes and abuses people. Ah, and it gets bigger and bigger, and the regulations get more and more. That's been the problem. That's really the swamp. The swamp's not even Congress. A lot of people in Congress, they, they mean well in a weird roundabout way, they're just dumb. Bureaucrats tend to be evil. There's a difference between the two. The FBI is nothing more than another government bureau. It, it, it's no different, it's no less corrupt. Why is it that people assume that this one bureau, because it gathers intel, must be trustworthy? I would think that would make it more prone to corruption because the level of power, the ability of that bureau to destroy someone's life without any real just cause whatsoever is far greater. It's like the NSA. NSA revelations come out and the Democrats they basically, they just bend over and they say, well, all the things that we've been fighting for for the last decade, against war and against surveillance and against abuse, we want privacy, we want, you know, freedom and liberty and all these things. Bush, you know, represents the opposite and, and into the Obama era, they continue to blame Bush for every problem that's under the sun. All of a sudden, they forget all about what they've been saying for, for years. They say, oh no, liberty, who needs that? No, freedom is a bad thing, it's scary. People might have the wrong opinion. Privacy, that's scary. You know, some, some extremist, by which we mean every extremist group that's not religious in nature, uh, might do something wrong. So we, we need to fight them over there so we don't have to fight them over here. We want to give the FBI, the NSA, the CIA limitless surveillance powers. You know, we used to say we were afraid that Bush would misuse them. We're not afraid Obama will misuse them because he's got a D after his name, so we trust him more. By the way, now we're stuck. We have to continue uh, uh, arguing in favor of these things, even though we call the president of the United States Adolf Hitler. That's really, really funny. This is the hypocrisy of our times. Thankfully, this bullshit tends to get old real quick. People eventually see through these great lies. It's just how long they can continue to keep people tangled in the illusion. I'm telling you, it's an illusion. We don't need this kind of surveillance practice. It's not necessary to keep us safe. I'm sorry, but you know, in times beforehand, before that happened, magically, we, we weren't racked by tens of thousands of terrorist attacks every year. Now, I wonder why we didn't have the same surveillance apparatus we had now. How, what stopped them then? Could it be that most of these people are poorly coordinated, not particularly numerous, and that if we just leave these nations alone, for the most part, we don't have to deal with the problem? Yeah, that seems like a more sane solution, but you see, that doesn't uh, help 
uh, the military industrial complex that socialist asshole FDR built. It doesn't help him to his uh, corpse to embezzle more money now uh, through his partners who like to keep perpetual proxy wars going. And that's really the, the root of the problem. Democrats don't seem to understand that it was one of their own that basically started this whole fucking problem. He just happened to be our only socialist president, that bitter cripple FDR who was uh, screwing his secretary. You know, she had to do all the work because he couldn't move his legs. Uh, but yeah, you've got propaganda on one side, propaganda on the other. We've got, but the big thing is, hey, everyone, we've got a surveillance system that apparently has such a low threshold for evidence that they can conduct, they can spy on you or anybody else for basically any reason, all they've got to do is have a piece of op research, a random piece of propaganda that could have been fed back into a, a document by the person who leaked it in the first place, like Steele did to Yahoo News. How convenient. He can make his own evidence up. All he has to do is be convincing enough to get, you know, a, a second tier news site to report on it. Wow. Right Wing Watch says that Stefan Molyneux has ties to the Aryan Brotherhood. We'd better conduct surveillance on him. Don't you see how that could be a problem? Yeah, you, all you need is one politicized agent. By the way, what, what would have happened? What would they have done if, if this same dossier had been on the other side? If uh, it had been on the Clinton camp? And it came to light that some FBI agents that were loyal to like the G the hardline GOP cause had done something like this. You'd be calling it the these people that are saying this is a nothing burger, it's a dud, it doesn't matter, respect the FBI would be saying, oh, rip their throats out. It's the worst thing we've seen. It's a million times worse than Watergate. And in all honesty, by the way, there would be Republicans, maybe not the libertarian or, or new right side, but the lay Republicans, the old guard, the establishment centrists, they'd, they'd dismiss it. They'd say, oh, you know, you're worried about nothing. Ha ha, pinkos. It'd be the same bullshit. Meanwhile, the progressives are like the holdouts of the Democrats that actually care about this shit. That's because they're focused on FISA abuse. It doesn't matter that it had to do with Trump. You calling him a Russian doesn't mean that the FBI should be able to randomly violate people's rights. It doesn't make any sense. It's how you destroy your country and end up with such total decadence. You end up with another uh, Byzantine situation. That's about all. Peace out.